thank be to God for the old songs. Yes. Even though they bring back good and pleasant memories sometimes, not always pleasant, but we can say we know that our Redeemer is yes. yes. got your Bibles today. You can open to two portions of Scripture. One in particular will be the book of Ruth, and I'm not teaching the book of Ruth in its entirety. I want to glean... Hallelujah. Let me have my, my mic, Brother Neil. Amen. Open your Bibles to Ruth, Ruth chapter 1. <coughs> We're going to glean up for what the Lord gave us for the Word for 2013. I, I felt led of the Lord to, uh, this morning. If you need a title for this message, we're going to talk about the to reevaluate my purpose. Everybody in the work of the Lord, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to realize we have a purpose, and it is our part to find out what our purpose is from God. That's right. Now we all have jobs, but our jobs does not necessarily indicate that is our purpose in the kingdom. Most people have jobs because they have to have some means of support. But what we want to do this morning to help you to discover what is your purpose for 2013. And so uh, the Sunday before that, we talked about reevaluating your purpose. We talked about things like rethink your purpose, redirect your seat giving, Reassess what you're being fed, God, why you're being fed God's Word. Redirect your focus. Reconnect with your anointing. So I want to touch on some of those things today. And those were uh, on the message we did for 2013 in January. Today, if you would also turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Uh, probably every believer is one of their famous uh, scriptures that they adhere to which is relevant to where we are today because Paul is talking to the church at Rome and he's giving them a synopsis of what is going on when he talks about being led by the Spirit, walking by the Spirit. Uh, he says, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So when we find our purpose, according to Romans 8, 28, where we want to get to today, we will find out whether we have law working in us or grace and truth working in us. And it's very obvious into some of the places that the Lord has already cautioned us about in 2013 is to be careful where you are and what you're being fed because there's still much uh, law being found in the church. Not that the law is evil, but anything that has a law that brings you under condemnation and tries to manipulate you not the spirit of grace. Somebody That's say right. amen. amen. The Bible says in Romans 8 27, let's read the verse before it said, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. And this is why we're gathering this year together. We're trying to find what is the mind of the spirit for our lives. First of all, you got to realize you're an individual. And you have a purpose. Look at your name and say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. Have a purpose. Your purpose is not just to sit in a chair. Your purpose is to be uh, activated in the kingdom of God. Your purpose, like my purpose, is to go out and witness to the law and to the need. So he says, what is in the mind of the Spirit? So what would be in the mind of God? Does anybody know what would be the mind of God? Because he made an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. But verse 28, he brings them to this understanding. We know all things that work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called, or the called, not are called, but are the called according to his purpose. Right. Now, I, I want you to just take a moment and, and break that down a little bit for you. The word that when he comes to, and we know is not the word genosko. It's not the word Greek word genosko, just to learn is that what we know is what we perceive with our eyes, our senses, 
and we discern. And now that changes the whole thing. The word ido is E-I-D-O, is what you perceive with your eyes, having perception, having good discernment, having to be able to look into the realm of the spirit and be able to tell what's right and what's wrong, not what appears to be right on the outside, but what is really working. Knowing the spirit that is talking to you. Would that be a better word for you? We need to know what spirit we're listening to. There are, the Bible says in the last days that we're living in, there are many voices, but there are many spirits. And there are antichrist spirits throughout the land, but unfortunately it's in the church. And so we're, we, we, we not only realize, according to Colossians 2, that there's traditions of men, there's philosophy, and there's deceit. But there's a lot of things creeping into the church. So for us to be focused and to have purpose this year is to find out what God wants you to do to activate things in your life, in the kingdom, all year long. And so, not like years past, I used to give you the word of the Lord and then we just saw the Lord bring this to pass. But this year, we're going to talk about what the word of the Lord was. And the first thing he talked about was to reevaluate your purpose. So how do we do that? He says, to define the love of God is Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. And some of you have this committed to memory. Says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now that is a promise, a New Testament promise, but it's a New Testament promise because in Philippians 4 19 he says, for my God shall supply all my needs right. according to his riches. Where? Where? In Christ. And see, this is what we want to have a purpose to understand. We are in Christ. We're not just a religious bunch of people gathered together on Sunday morning and Thursday night. We have an in Christ experience with me. We have felt, we have observed, we have uh, walked in, and, and we understand that the anointing separates us from religious activity. That's right. How many of you know in times past and many of us? Uh, been together for some time. We've had some marvelous times when the presence of God would come into the sanctuary and absolutely take your breath away. It was like somebody turned the heat on at, at 100 degrees right. and the heat of God would come up. People were healed and delivered and miraculously got, got, got delivered from things and got massive and miraculous healings. So here he comes with this. So, and so we can say the goodness of God is what? Romans 2.14. The goodness of God, the Bible says, that leadeth men to repentance. It is the goodness of God that helps us develop. It is the goodness of God that helps us to change. But what is our part and our purpose? Our purpose is to repent of the things that we know that's not good and to embrace the things that are good. Amen? Yes. All right. The New Testament version of purpose is to place before or so he can send you forth. When God has purpose, I'm going to turn his heel. Or down. I think with the Holy Ghost, we want to have enough. And so we find it's according to his purpose. So the purpose then is that we're not moved by sight, the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says we're moved by the Spirit. According to His purpose, the Old Testament says is to draw out of you His will. Isn't that good? Yeah. God will draw out of you His will. You don't have to go to 40 seminars and attend 50 classes to find out what your purpose is. But if we will be by the Spirit, get motivated and pray in the Spirit and stand before God long enough, He will reveal to you your purpose. It is His will to reveal to you His purpose. You're going to like the new definition of purpose in just a minute. So in the year 2013, we we're calling it a year of turnaround. Time for us to reevaluate our purposes in God, what He wants me to do, and realize that God's providence is working on our behalf. He brings us through and He brings us out. He never fails. That's 
That's right. It may not be on my timetable. It may not be on your timetable. But he brings us through and he brings us out. So here's the most simplest definition that I can give you of a purpose. Purpose is simply, simply defined determination. What are you determined to see God do in you and through you in 2013? It's not only a year of turnaround, it's a year of double portion. Double blessing. My little skit I gave you a couple of weeks ago, double for your trouble. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, Pastor? We're going to have some trouble. But we're going to have the blessings too. And so without the trouble, there's no blessings. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So let's consider this. Now that you have God has your attention, let's turn to Ruth chapter 2 in the Bible and talk about the first thing that God gave me in mind to reevaluate my purpose. Write this down. Our purpose is recognizable according to our determination. Our purpose is recognizable according to our determination. Let's use Ruth for a minute. Most of you have heard me preach about Ruth many times. But in Ruth chapter 2, let's pick up the story, realizing that Ruth is a Moabite Gentile woman. And her mother-in-law, Naomi, has sent her out to the field to glean. Now, we know that gleaning was simply leftovers. How many of you are tired of eating leftovers? Yes. Yeah. Now, we're not only tired of eating leftovers, we're tired of the little. We want the much. That's yes. Right. And so, for us to move into the much in 2013, we're going to first have to find our purpose and reevaluate our purpose. Yeah. So, if we're not moving in an area where God is prospering us, using us, uh, giving us more than we have to begin to put a cork in the bottle and say, Lord, let's find out what's going on here in my life. So let's find out what happened to Ruth, the little boy. In chapter 2, verse 16, it said, And let fall all some of handfuls of purpose, see the word purpose, mm -hmm. for her. It just so happened that she was, it, it was a coincidence. She was in the field, and it just so happened that the people that are working in the field felt sorry for Ruth and they just so happened to give her a handful of extra sheaves. No. That is not what's happening. That's right. What is happening is she supposed in her heart that no matter what she would be faithfully serving Naomi. So the first thing we have to realize in our purpose being recognizable according to our determination is to be found faithfully serving. If you're watching by YouTube, realize that you have to be faithful to somebody else. And when we're faithful to somebody else, somebody's going to be faithful to you. Right. It doesn't matter who we are. Remember the old song of yours, no matter, you have to serve somebody. Whether it be Buddha, Hare Krishna, or whatever. He said, you have to serve somebody. And see, God is bringing back in, in the order of the church, it, it, and it doesn't take thousands of us to do this. Begin to take people and bring them back into that purpose, because here's a woman who was totally surrendered to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Naomi represents Pentecost. She had come to a point in a pinnacle of her life where she had reached her max. Naomi reminds me of people in the kingdom who have come up to Pentecost and have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and have gifts of the Spirit operating in their life, but they quit there. They don't go beyond a Pentecostal experience. They don't get into the Holy of Holies or into the what is preparing ahead for us, which is the Feast of Tabernacle, where God is going to come down and absolutely surrender us and fill the, the areas where we are with His presence. Can I say it to you this way? God, Jesus is literally going to come down in the Spirit and absolutely make it the boat. That's right. He taught this principle in the vine and the branches to his disciples. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask anything according to my will, and it shall be done for you. Yes. 
the abiding word, the abode word is that he himself will come and be in the midst of us. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we will know that he is God and we will call him Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Wow. Yes. We can't fathom Jesus presence coming into a small facility, a small building and absolutely sitting down in the midst of us and just allowing us to sponge off of him. What questions would you ask him in his presence? Mm. What would you want to know when he's there? If you've had any experiences with God, some of them I can talk about, some of them I can't talk about because they, they, they feel so spaced out. Even Paul, the Bible says, he went to the third heaven. Now, we have people who are spooky. That's right. They go shopping in the third heaven. They go frequently visit four or five times a week. That's not scripture. But the point being, Ruth came out of no understanding of who Christ was. And now she has a replica, a person that is symbolically representing Jesus to her. And that was her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. But Naomi represented a move and a, and a feast that the Jews had was called Passover or Pentecost. And they came into this Pentecostal experience. This is why we find so many denominations today who have, they call themselves Pentecostals, but they come to a, a plateau and they stop. They figure this is all there is to God. This is all the theology we understand about God. And there's therefore nothing to go further. But Jesus is so much more than that. And he wants to show himself strong in his people. And for him to do that, we have to realize what our purpose is from God. And we have to reach out in the Spirit and say, Lord, it doesn't matter if we're two or three or four or twenty or a hundred or two hundred. We want you to come. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. We have to make ourselves yes. available and open ourselves up to him and say, Lord, right. if it's just me and you in the living room, come. Yes. And make your abode. Amen. So, understanding this, turn with me, hold your finger, and we'll be right back on to Luke chapter 16. It's all about purpose, the divine purpose of God. If you find your purpose, you'll find His will. If you're determined enough, you will seek Him, the Bible said, until you find Him. And I believe you're determined enough. Luke 16, 10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least, mm -hmm. that means not a whole lot, is faithful also in the much. The much is more than you can imagine. And he that is unjust is the least in the unjust is also in much. When you find a people who can put on a facade and talk the right stories or, or quote the right scripture in your presence, does not give you any indication that these people are really spiritual. That's right. What makes you spiritual is that you can follow the divine order of God that he sends down. And God has always had a man, and God has always had a woman to lead his people. No flock is leading themselves. No. And this, idi this, this, it, this is idiocracy in its stupidity when groups meet together and they believe that God will select someone in, this, in the midst of them and he'll get up and talk. And that's how God speaks. There are movements years ago through California that spread all the way to Lafayette. And they believed when they assembled together that the purpose of God, no matter who, it could be someone who on drugs and just sitting there, or OD, just OD the night before and sitting there and they believe the light of God fell upon them and they'd get up and be the speaker for this massive crowd. Do you know how deceptive that is? But that is the obvious. What is not obvious is what's going on in the church when philosophy has taken over the Word of God, vain deceit is still over the Word of God, sexual incontinence, se sexual in incantations before the children, verbally making comments about their husband and wife relationship in the sanctuary of God for all to hear and making and laughing about it. That is not the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. The purpose of God is to get His Word inside of you and for you to realize that you have purpose and you have vision 
and your life will not be forced at the end of your journey that you can stand for, for God and say, look, I've done nothing with my life. But at the end of your journey, you can hear him say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And it doesn't matter how many BBs you stack, it doesn't matter how many people you, you got saved, that is not the point. You're not in, in contest with anybody about if you win more souls than somebody else. It's what He has done in you that you have allowed Him to live in your life and allowed His anointing to be present to teach you how to walk by the Spirit. The Word by itself cannot teach you how to walk by the Spirit. You have to have the Word and the Spirit living in you to teach you how to walk with the Word. The word is your helper. It's your food. It gives you strength. Right. How we got off of that on that. So, purpose plus determination brings about supplication. Think about that. The Bible says, For my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in want. In the church? No. Christ Jesus. In the sanctuary? No. Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus. In the anointing one. That's right. And his anointing. You have to think. Not what you thought about. 2012, you've got to put that behind you. That's old wine. You're not bringing that back. You have to think that you are the anointed of Christ. Christ is in you and you're in Christ. And therefore, that makes you anointed. That's right. What do you mean makes me anointed? You're like a light bulb in a dark place. You have the goods. When somebody walks up to you, you don't have to turn your computer on to find out the scripture that you want to give them. You already got a light bulb on inside of you, and you have a word to give somebody in due season. Bam! Before they can change their mind. One of the easiest ways to open doors is when you tell somebody, do you know Jesus loves you? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you open the door and say, hey, do you know, do you, or do you know Jesus? That's an open door. Mm -hmm. At that moment, in the marketplace, you just found a purpose. We never sit down at a restaurant or a cafe anywhere. If Sister Diane doesn't ask the waiter, do you know Jesus? Okay. We have this little thing, like we, I'm going to beat you or she's going to beat me. I'll do it first or she do it first. <laughs> but she's pretty fast, so she gets me first. She grabbed them by the hands, make contact, impart to touch. See the anointing inside of you is transferable. And all of a sudden they go, uh, yes. We had a little way to work with you. Friday night. Cracked up. We went out and shared a meal. A young little African American kid named Joshua. He's looking. And he goes to a particular denomination. And he was like we were magnets. He kept coming back to us. We, we not only talked to him about Jesus, we gave him counsel. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. He had been raised by his grandparents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could relate. Yeah. And it was a connection. So all of a sudden, in that moment's time, listen, you don't have to be deep. All of a sudden, that moment, you found purpose for being right where you were sitting. Not just for the food you were eating. There was a purpose of sitting at right there at the table. And she wanted to sit in a warm place. And they had the fireplace roaring. <laughs> it wasn't about having a romantic meal. It was being there for a divine purpose. We could sit home and make Google eyes at one another. We don't have to sit in a, a restaurant. Amen? Amen. So, and let's read it again. Let's go to verse 15. Then we'll come back to 16. And when she was risen up to glean, she was going to work. And this is one thing in our purpose. We have to realize we're going to have to work in the field in 2013 or we're going to end up with just you, me, and four more. That's right. Command his young men, this is the men that were immature, saying, let her glean. Let her gather even among the sheep and reproach her not. They couldn't say, my pile's bigger than your pie. Mm -hmm. And let fall also some of the handful, the handful of purpose of God for her, and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. 
So she gleaned in the field until even and beat up all that she had gleaned, and it was about an epa of oil, which will equal to our ten percent what she brought in. But her ten percent, listen to me, I feel the anointing of God. The ten percent was her abundance for her. She came from nothing. Didn't know who God was. Her mother-in-law is training her and mentoring her. Your purpose of mentoring and your days of mentoring, listen to me, you that are sitting here today, it's not by accident, it's not over. You're just beginning. This is a new season for mentoring. And God is going to connect you with people for you to mentor them. And don't have to be in the building mm -hmm. on your personal time, on your individual time. Yeah. We have found the most effective place of ministry in the last few years has been out in the marketplace. Yeah. That's right. If you notice, they're not all here this morning. But if we do our part, we will bring them in one by one, two by two, and God will bring them in, and they'll be thankful, and they will go out and get two or three, and bring them one by one, and my families, and they'll be thankful. So God will be able to implant His purpose in their lives. How do you think we're going to ever take a city just sitting there talking about it? The Bible says she had received a handful of bundles of grain. Why? Faithful in little, faithful in much. Mm -hmm. If little doesn't bring adequate joy, we will not receive or enjoy the much. When we have little, if we're not excited about the little, don't kid yourself. We're not going to get excited about the much. Mm -hmm. Because you're there goes, oh God, do I have to do all this? The Lord posed the question to me just the other day. He said, what, what's going to happen when you're going to be so busy that you don't have time but to eat, sleep, pray, eat, sleep, pray, minister, eat, sleep, pray, minister? I said, I don't know. I never thought about that. He said, start thinking about it. <laughs> but when I look at what's in front of me, I'm like, oh, I got plenty of time. Uh, uh, All this can change. Yeah. Like yeah. that. Ecclesiastes 5.12, write this down. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet when he eat little or much. Let me just say that again. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eat little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. The concept of, we're going to do a whole lot better when we get rich. Hmm? How many of you ever thought, boy, if I just had more money, I could get it done? But he just said, Ecclesiastes is the preacher. The preacher says, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer. The word rest, or he have no rest. He won't sleep peacefully. Why? Because he worries about the abundance. <laughs> but when he had little, he didn't have that problem. But God wants us to have much when he brought us to our divine purpose. And he will begin to legislate things in our lives that we can move on. Secondly, point number two. Reevaluate my purpose. Purpose in your heart to allow turnarounds. Amen. Can I give you the old cliche? You got to leave to cleave. Cleave becomes something like an adhesive glue. When God got you on a trail, don't turn loose until you have fulfilled everything He's told you to do. If you're publishing books, if you're a cook, if you work in a cafeteria, if you're a school teacher, if you're a city mom, uh, are you in sale? It doesn't matter what you do. Stay the course until God had brought this turnaround in your life. Say it this way. What you did not finish in 2012, leave behind and embrace 2013. You're not going back. You're going on. Forward. So, purpose in your heart to allow turnaround, number one. Turn from disappointments and embrace new possibilities. Isn't that a good word? Mm -hmm. Turn to Rome and now turn to Ruth chapter one. We must turn from our disappointments and embrace new possibilities. All of us have, have, have left disappointments in 2012. There is nothing we can do to go back and eradicate that. But we can move forward with a perspective and believe that in this new season, 
we will find our purpose and we will become the divine will of God on the earth. And God is going to use, you make it personal, God is going to use me in 2013 yes. to fulfill His purpose. Ruth, like ourselves, had to be awakened to the fact that her husband represents the old school. Ouch. How we love the old landmarks and how we love to keep what we learned from yesteryear that was mm -hmm. precious to us. But in keeping that, without finding our new purpose, we can't go on into what God wants, the new season God wants to bring us into. Because keeping that old stuff becomes like weight That's right. on your shoulder. And you see the promised land in front of you, but you can't get there because you're being weighted down from the old. But it works so well over here like this. I remember when we were in Pentecost, it was like this. In the charismatic movement, we could do this and that. Oh, we could do this and we could shout and we could quote the word and poof, it would work. But now God has you in a different purpose because obviously what's happening to us, we are maturing into a different level. So when we move into a different level, that means we have different levels. Mm -hmm. And we have new horizons and new arenas to encounter. That means we have to get fresh revelation yes. how to move in that dimension. Because we're going to talk about uncommon places in just a little bit. Don't, lose, don't let me lose your attention. So. If her husband represented the old school, the old ways of living, or the old pastor, or the old ministry, it's a new day. What are you doing in the new day? Watch. You turn around and embrace the new thing. Naomi is giving up all the discourse in chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. And they said unto her, Surely we will return to thee with thy people. And Naomi said, turn again, this is the first turn, my daughter, why will you go with me? Are there yet not any more sons in my womb, and they may be your husbands? So what is she telling her? She's warning them about disappointments. But Ruth is looking for the new possibilities. She knows that Naomi could have other babies and raise them up and to become old enough before she's too old to be childbearing. So here's what you deal with this. When life hands you things that make you bitter, make fresh lemonade. That's right. <laughs> Spiritually, keep walking. Don't stop and look back at your mistakes. That's the wrong thing to do. Secondly, the purpose of God is for you to allow Him to reveal truth and remove error. Ruth had to be willing to submit to authority of Naomi because her husband represented the old days, the old wineskin. And Ruth could not produce the new wineskin, but Ruth could give to her what she already had. And Naomi had to have a different perspective that if she was to look into the field, she would find her Boaz, her kinsman redeemer. And he had new perspectives. He had new vision, he had new purpose, he had new determination, everything bothered. He was the one that sent the young men to go into the field, and it just so happened that she had handfuls on purpose, the Bible says. And it just so happened, 2013, this year, now you write this down because it's going to happen to you. Some of you, if not all of you, somebody's going to come along in your life this year, and just so happened give you some handfuls on purpose. It was more than you expected. Just so happened that someone's going to open a door for you that's been closed. It just so happened that for some of you, your dream is going to begin to be fulfilled in front of your eyes. But he's going to have to take you to the uncommon place to do that. This is why I didn't have enough time to expound on all that on, that on a couple of Sundays ago. Here's, the, here's what he said. Purpose of God is for you to allow him to reveal truth and remove error. Ruth, the Bible says she clave to Naomi. Orpah, the gazelle, betrayed her with a kiss. 
You're going to see them come, and you're going to see them go. Don't let that disturb you. That's right. Orbra went back to the thing that was stronger in her, which was her God. She went back to paganism mm -hmm. and to serving her God or her religious activities. God, God is going to bring people back to Jerusalem, the mother church. Naomi was going back to where she knew God was, and he would protect and provide for her. So Naomi's next proclamation to Ruth is, I'm going back to Israel. And I have no other kids, no son. I'm not pregnant right now. I don't have a husband, and I can't give you a son. Why would you wait this long? So she, she's kind of inclining to her that she's going to have some kind of disappointments here. But the new perspective, Ruth knew that somebody was going to come along because she had purpose and her purpose led her to her determination was going to bring her to her destination. Our purpose in Christ is to follow His anointing. Somebody say amen. 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 Number three, and we're done. Rethink your purpose and consider the uncommon places. Ruth 1, verse 16. Here's Ruth's cry. Here should be our cry. When God places us on the godly leadership and godly people for us to learn. See, my position in Pastor Diane's position is to pass on to you the thing that we've already learned and to, to get you to raise your level of vision and to look down to what's coming. Look down into your field what is coming. Look to see if your Boaz is coming in your direction. And the Bible says, Ruth said to Naomi, which means bitter. Remember Naomi turned bitter and sour? And when she had a son, she here with the son of my sorrow. Watch this. And she said, Behold, I, uh, Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you. That is her petition. That is her ploy. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou, thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Entreat me not to leave. Simply define the New Testament. Give me a reason to follow. Did not God tell us, come and let us reason together? Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be what? As white as snow. Come, reason with me. I want to follow you, Naomi. Where can I go? These are the last days. Brace yourself. Famine is coming. Amos 8.11 has already predicted and prophesied to us that there is going to be a famine in this land right. for the word of yes. God. You heard what this young man said to us. They were going to come from 150 mile radius. I believe that. Because I knew that. I knew that. Mm -hmm. And I know what God showed me. That in the very last day, He is going to bring them from around the globe to find places like, not just us. Don't get yourself all caught up in just what we are. No, we're not elite. Go and find places that God has strategically placed on the earth and in this city where they will be fed truth. Because what you're being fed in most of your organized churches today is half truth. That's right. Yeah. People That's the way it is. And if it's not, then why aren't these people that are listening to it and receiving it changing? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't have the ability to change it. See, religion only has the, the, the opportunity and the ability to give you more knowledge in your head, but nothing in your heart right. and your spirit, man. Then feed your spirit man. He said it's not going to be a famine for bread, nor for thirst for water, but hearing the word of the Lord. That's a powerful scripture. I've looked at that many, 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 many times. Ruth, when did Ruth come to her purpose? When she realized the gods of the Moabites had no life. Mm -hmm. When you will come to your purpose, no matter what you're facing, be it job, be it civil authority, spiritual authority, when you will come to the end of your rule in that situation, you go, oh, wait, I was doing this, but this is what God wants me to do. Because there's no life in that. And here's what happens to so many people. Running after God in all the wrong places. 
does not create stability. Mm -hmm. But it will create something else. Mm -hmm. Confusion. And with that confusion, if you mingle and get hooked up with them, they'll bring That's right. discord among you. It's a spirit. We can get the fullness if we want to find our purpose. Ruth went to the uncommon fields to receive uncommon favor and to receive uncommon prosperity. Wow. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, wow. Wow, that's right. So the way of the king is through the purpose. For it has a purpose in your life. The way to the king is through his purpose for your life. That's right. Let's go back and read it. In verse 16, it says, Ruth says, Entreat me. Now, if I could take you back to yesteryears, in the time that Noah had built the ark, it was a last day moment for the people on the earth. Now think about your relatives, some of that have gone before you, some that are still here. And can you hear them crying, Uncle Noah, open the doors! Oh. Hey Noah, it's, it's Uncle Ron! Noah, it's Nephew Neil! But the Bible says, when the doors were shut, in symbolism, the Holy Spirit sealed it. And that vessel, and that ship, was sealed there for eternity. Mm -hmm. And whatever span of life was inside that ark is, was the purpose of God uh -huh. to reveal to the earth that he would not allow wickedness to rule and to reign. Mm -hmm. That he had him a people. It was kind of like a tabernacle, a ship enclosed, right. traveling through the water of God. And so, when you look at the Ruth and Naomi situation, you're talking about a baby Christian who knew nothing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. A baby Christian that constantly pulling you. Yeah. Oh, what is this the Lord? What, what does this scripture mean? Sister, what does this mean, Sister Carolyn? I don't, show me what show me what the word of God says, Sister Carolyn. And you feel like they're babies and you're having babies again and they're they're tugging on you and they're weighing down on you. But be able for sure when you as mothers in the, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom and sons in the kingdom will begin to teach them and help them validate their purpose, they're going to rise up perhaps to be the next apostles and prophets, yes. evangelists, pastors, yes. and teachers. Yes. And how great will your reward be because you took time for the little yes. and you weren't so locked in about the much, but you knew much was coming. Yes. So see, if we get our eyes refocused on God and realize our real purpose on the earth is to first bring them in the kingdom. Yes. The church has lost sight yes. of so many all together. So winning 101, so winning 102, so winning 103, so winning, so winning, so winning. It is out the door. It is no longer kosher. We don't have time for that. All we want to do is run after the prophets and the apostles. We want to run after this tradition and run after this way and run after this fire and run after this thing. And we've been blown all up and down the city and the highway. And our lives demonstrate the wind that have been blowing in our direction and they work from God. That's right. And we sit home mad the end of the journey. I got enough. I'm not going to another service. <laughs> but that is not your purpose. Amen. The purpose in that, if you got involved, was to bring you to the end of yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you could drink in the well and say, well, been there. Went to the seminar, <laughs> bought the CDs, <laughs> bought the book, it's a got the t-shirt, got the cap, got it all. But that didn't do any good to me. Because I'm still sitting in the sanctuary of God asking, Lord, what is my purpose? You didn't save me just to sit in the chair. Mm -hmm. So he's going to activate us in 2013. Yes, the Bible says in John, two more scriptures, 117 says, The law came by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. So, here's Ruthie. Went to uncommon fields, areas she never knew, 
you, you get, by now you've got to be understanding uncommon places I've never walked in before things I've never done before things I've never seen before things I've never experienced before and in this uncommon field I will receive uncommon favor people are going to come and put jingles in your pocket open a door of entrance for you a, a, a business proposition for you that you thought wow how did that, how this happen? Just because I go to Cornerstone Church? No. Because you found your divine purpose in God. And the final robe is that you have uncommon prosperity. Listen to this. You are shouting, I said. Now you've come to the place where God has put enough in your handfuls that when there's a need, you don't have to look around to see if somebody else is going to give. You can write it yes, and say, yes. thank God for the blood yes, of Jesus. Yes. Amen. And you can write that million dollar check for that missionary that's lost everything and, and the orphanage was completely destroyed. Without blinking an eye. That's right. Write it. Hallelujah. And nobody can pin roses on you because nobody ever knows. You're the yes. best kept secret yeah. yes. in the kingdom. Yes. You wear the same clothes. You drive the same car. You eat the same food. You did not let riches keep you from, like the Ephesians 5, the Ecclesiastes 5, keep you from sleep because now you have wealth. Amen. I'm going to get a wealth transfer this year. I'm waiting for it big time. Yes, yes, yes. So God is training me that when it comes, that I don't let it overtake me. Yes. And not to forget my purpose That's right. in the kingdom. So Romans 11, 29 says, The gifts and calls of God are without repentance. He does not revoke your gifts or office. When He called you to something, that's what He wants. And God's way of repentance, what's the definition? Change of purpose. Mm -hmm. So what you thought you were going to do 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, has not come to fruition. Look up. Your redemption joy. God has a new vision. Hallelujah. It's a new day. It's, a new day. it's your year. Turn, turn around. around. Turn around. <laughs> Somebody say Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thus saith the word of God. We hope that you've enjoyed this this morning. Yes. Now if you're writing a check for a million dollars. Don't misspell my name. But if you want to sow seed, we have our offering brought in front and bring your offering to the Lord. We'll be thankful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me let you turn this off. Oh, oh, oh. I just hit it. I just hit it. That's natural. Amen. Any prayers, anything we need to bring before the Lord before we get yes, My friend, Miss Jeannie, asked to pray for her, for her sickness. And actually, she needs a lot of prayer. And Christina. And Christina, Brother Neil, Jeremy, so need yeah. touch. Amen. Well, let's stand up. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. There's no greater name. None.